I want to jump on to deliver a little bit of breaking news to you. I know that the report and the audio that I'm going to play for you is going to make a lot of news over the coming hours. You're going to wake up to lots of discussions about this, so I might as well jump on it to discuss right now. Given the fact that this is just now breaking, I'm going to be honest, I don't yet have a lot of properly formulated takeaways, but instead want to give you the content, give you the audio, the article that this pertains to, and then you can have your own takeaways. Before, to sort of frame a little bit of one of the takeaways that I know that I do have, before getting into the Epstein-related audio, I do want to play for you Elon Musk, who says something in this clip, we've watched it and listened to it before, that gets at what is so hypocritical and absurd about one of the MAGA arguments, given Trump's relationship to Epstein. But we have something new information about that, never before discussed, that we'll get into in a second. But first, here's Elon Musk. While you're watching this, please remember to click the subscribe button. If you have not already, we are hoping to get to 1 million subscribers by election day. All of you have been doing a stunning job of making that more and more possible by the day. Here's Elon Musk. But, but, but it's, it's just obvious that, that Biden's not in charge. It's obvious that Kamala's not in charge. I mean, the, the, the Kamala's, they just replaced the, the Biden puppet with the Kamala puppet, um, very obviously. And, and so you can tell, like, if the teleprompter stops working, then the puppet stopped, breaks. And it's like, oh. <laughs> the, the puppet just starts looping because the teleprompter broke. Um, I don't have a teleprompter. I can just talk like a normal human. So, so I, I mean, I, yeah, I, I think there's, it's not, from what I can tell, it's not one puppet master, it's many, but, uh, you know, um, interesting to see the crossover between the Epstein client list and Kamala's puppet masters. <laughs> <laughs> so, I've said it before, but as we get into what we're about to, there's particularly aggravating political point aside from the low character Trump related point about how MAGA does this thing where they act as if the horrific things that Epstein did and and their perception about Democrats how then all of the statements they're going to make about Democrats about the other side are justified because of Epstein and they never, they never seem to engage with the fact that Vice President Kamala Harris has absolutely no connections to Jeffrey Epstein. But Donald Trump sure does. And while I don't like jumping to conclusions, I know if you had the reporting and audio that we're about to go through, you'd be jumping to conclusions, MAGA. The Daily Beast reports, Epstein showed me photos reports Michael Wolff, the controversial writer, of Trump with topless young women sitting in his lap, claims author Jeffrey Epstein showed off photos of Donald Trump with topless young women sitting in his lap. And actually, the audio you're about to listen to is of this controversial author, as the Daily Beast is describing him, Michael Wolff, alleging that these photos were of quote-unquote young girls. The pedophile financier had about half a dozen pictures which showed Trump by the pool with multiple young women. Wolf claimed on his podcast, Fire and Fury Thursday, they were taken in the late 90s at Epstein's Palm Beach home, where he victimized dozens of underage girls along with his procurer, Ghislaine Maxwell, who Trump, of course, wished well, Wolf said. And uh, Wolf alleged that they were in Epstein's safe, putting these photos of Trump into a safe, very strange, which the FBI seized when they raided his homes in New York and Palm Beach in July 2019. The massive haul of evidence taken by the feds has never been made public, and while prosecutors disclosed after the raid that they had hundreds of photos of girls and young women, they have never offered any more details of them. And, of course, Jeffrey Epstein did commit suicide in prison. Here's the first bit of audio. This is from Michael Wolff's Fire and Fury podcast. Uh, no. <laughs> he brought Trump along to give him some advice about moving the swimming pool. But then Trump went around Epstein's back and bid $40 million for the house. <laughs> so this is classic 
rich guy breakdown. Um, totally, yeah, uh, yeah. But then Epstein knew that Trump didn't have the money. Therefore, Epstein's conclusion was that he must be fronting for someone. Sure. And in fact, in that classic money laundering setup, Trump bought the house for $40 million, bought it through borrowed money, and then the house was put on the market not long afterwards, and then immediately sold for $96 million. To um, who? Um, to w- one of the oligarchs in the close Putin right. circle. I mean, yeah. it's like, okay, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> neon. So Epstein was pissed, yeah. of course. And he began to threaten lawsuits, and he began to threaten press exposure. I mean, he was really, really, really pissed when those guys lose a dream house. Yeah, And that was the point at which Epstein's own legal problems, the problems with the girls began. And certainly in Epstein's telling, this all happened because it was Trump who first dropped a dime on him. Oh, is that right? Um, And Trump would have known about the girls because he was in and out of Epstein's house. Yeah. When Epstein and I were talking about this, and Trump was now the president of the United States, and I think frightening. I mean, frightening both because of because the most inappropriate person to be the president of the United States was probably Donald Trump. Yes. But also, I couldn't help but feel that there was a level of personal fear there. Um, yeah. So he's having this conversation with me. And as I say, I'm writing Fire and Fury. I'm trying to figure out Donald Trump. It's as confounding to me, of course, as it was to everybody. Who is this guy? Yeah. How did this happen? But in having this conversation, Epstein, on more than one occasion, would bring out these photographs that he had of Trump. And there were about a half a dozen photographs, and they were, you know, from the um, late 90s. Mm -hmm. They were Trump at Epstein's Palm Beach house, sitting around the pool with these young girls. And Mm. the young girls are topless, and in some of the pictures, they're sitting in his lap. I mean, and and then there's one I especially remember where there's a stain, a telltale stain on the front of Trump's pants, and the girls are pointing at him and laughing. Where are these pictures? You know, he would go and he would take them out of the safe. Yeah. And then he would return them to the safe. And I would say it was likely that they would have been there when the FBI, Trump's FBI at yeah. that point, not to put too fine a point on it, yeah. raided Epstein's house and took the contents of the safe in 2019. Wow. Is there a, a Steve Bannon connection? In- and then it moves on from there. But... Again, I say, given the gravity of sort of the implications, one of the things that's talked about in this discussion on Michael Wolff's Fire and Fury podcast is how a lot of mainstream media outlets, 60 Minutes, for example, was preparing a story on the Epstein-Trump relationship, a, a relationship that was longer than a decade. And then they ended up not running it because... As I've said to you before, given who Jeffrey Epstein is, underage human trafficker, one of the worst of the worst human beings, the implications that come of any discussion about the relationship between Epstein and Trump are so severe and serious, and again, a lot of gravity comes along with them, I think a lot of people are concerned about even discussing it. And that's why I always repeat, number one, this is one, as the Daily Beast described him, controversial author who has been documenting a bunch of discussions. I'll show you audio of his, part of his conversation with Jeffrey Epstein, but one guy documenting his discussions with Epstein and what he learned. And so we do put that in the category of, with anything that that is of an allegation nature, just allegations and and one person's testimony and i understand how serious all of this is but i also don't don't understand why we would not even touch it at all not discuss it at all especially given the crazy rhetoric that flows on the other side as you saw there from elon musk then we go on to this audio 
and the mm. young girls are topless, and in some of the pictures, they're sitting in his lap. I mean, Whoa. And, you know, he would go and he would take them out of the safe. Yeah. And, and it seems like something tech-wise is going a little strange where we're hearing what we already heard, but it is notable as well that if we're believing Michael Wolf, Wolf's testimony, that Epstein had these photos of Trump in a safe that he would show Wolf. Why would photos be in a safe of Trump with, quote unquote, young women or girls? Obviously notable. Took the contents of the safe in 2019. Wow. Is there a, a Steve Bannon connection in this? There's been a lot of reports about Epstein and Bannon. I introduced them. Um, well, you, um, I, I, I mean, this is... You, a, you will go to heaven, Michael. This is the thing. I'm talking to both of those guys, and they both wanted to meet each other. So <laughs> here I am in the middle of this. When but was this? This would have been after Bannon was pushed out of the White House. Like 2017? Yeah, so it would have been probably the fall of 2017. And Trump had fallen out several years before yeah, this. Yeah, that was, remember, they fell out in 2004. So yeah. Epstein is just watching watching Trump, the guy he knows from the sidelines. Um, yeah. And then Bannon now has now fallen out with, with, with Trump. So they instantly bonded. I mean, I saw this immediately. It was like two long lost brothers and they couldn't get enough of each trying to explain yeah. Donald Trump to the other, but even to themselves. I think they both hated Donald Trump or he had come to be so big in their head that they hated him. And then they were confounded by this phenomenon. So again, it was how to explain this, how to explain this. And then I remember exactly the moment they were introduced. Bannon said to Epstein, you were the only person I was afraid of in 2016. Because Bannon knew that Epstein and Trump had been close. And I think that he assumed that was not going to be good news for someone running to be the president of the United States. And he also knew that in 2016, 60 Minutes was planning an Epstein-Trump expose. What happened to that? I suppose the same thing that happened to all Epstein-Trump reports. You know, these two guys were friends for 15 years. The president of the United States and the most vilified sexual predator of the age. And yet somehow we know very little about this. I know that every time that I've tried to tell what I know about this story, I've met a do we really want to go there response. It's like, you know, Epstein is just too hot to handle. Mm. So I don't know. I mean, I've actually spoken to the 60 Minutes producer yeah. who was trying to do this. And I think that you get to the level of the allegations and the implications are so large. Yeah, that's right. Unless you have the smoking gun. Yes. And so anecdotal evidence, even a pile on of it, which yeah. I think we're offering here, is something that large media outlets stay away from. I mean, do you think Epstein committed suicide in... And then we can do a whole other thing, and I'll play that here in a second. All of this, I just want to keep repeating, is newsworthy. The fact that this is being discussed, the fact the audio of Epstein talking about the Trump White House, think about how late that is, what he knows of the Trump White House, personally, that I'll play... It is newsworthy, the big reports, two major one, ones from the Daily Beast. And then I try to be as transparent as I can with all of you. What's being stated here by Michael Wolf of why mainstream media often doesn't discuss this story is because unless you have hard, hard evidence and undeniable, irrefutable smoking gun of something specific, it does feel very uncomfortable, I'm telling you as I'm discussing this right now, to even talk about it in general because by even discussing their relationship, their long relationship, it feels like you're making points by implication. And that's why I often circle back to MAGA, if you choose to use Epstein, which they do if you're familiar with any of the online MAGA world they use epstein given they had political connections and and is such a prominent example of a vile underage human trafficker with an island and all this stuff they use that as see 
we must be right about the QAnon stuff because Epstein existed. We must be right that all the Democrats we don't like are pedos and all of the left are groomers and pedos because Epstein exists. Even though his political connections aren't uh, so simple and they don't seem to address something that if this were Biden, if this were Vice President Harris, they'd never stop talking about that about it. The hypocrisy I do think we should point to. And I'll say it again because of the importance of being very evidential, fact-based in our discussions of such serious, severe subjects and relating to someone who was what he was, being Jeffrey Epstein. I'm not alleging anything above and beyond what's being laid out here by author Michael Wolf and the Daily Beast reporting. This is the next report tonight. Listen to Jeffrey Epstein spill intel on Donald Trump's White House. And this is in a discussion with Michael Wolf. We have a snippet from one of the conversations that I recorded with Epstein. And I think this was in a restaurant in 2017. His people fight each other. Right. Uh, and then have outsiders. He sort of poisons the well outside. He will tell 10 people Bannon's a scumbag and Priest is not doing a good job and Kelly has a big mouth. What do you think? Jamie Dimon says that you're a problem and I shouldn't keep you. And I spoke to Carl Icahn and Carl thinks I need a new spokesperson. So Kelly, even though I hired Kelly Ann's husband, uh, Kelly Ann is just too much of a wild one. And then he tells Bannon, you know, I really want to keep you, but Kellyanne hates you. I have more than dozens. I, I probably have a hundred hours of Epstein talking about the inner workings of the Trump White House and mm. about his long-standing, deep relationship with Donald Trump. Yeah, and I was watching a documentary about the life of Trump that documented how fixated Trump was on Epstein and just whatever it was about the facade that Epstein put on, Trump was really riveted and uh, wanting to wanted to emulate it. Then here's where we left off on the Fire and Fury podcast. Jail or, or was he murdered? I mean, I was always startled uh, by how afraid he seemed about Trump, and I've spoken to several other people who knew Epstein well, and yeah. they make the same point and wondering what that's about. And I know that Epstein would emphasize how he believed Trump was capable of doing anything. Mm. Um, he had no scruples. You know, and I urged Epstein to go public with everything I've told you here, but Epstein's attitude was that I was clearly unaware of how the real world operated. So in the end, Epstein died in prison and we'll probably never hear that story. And I should bring up, because it connects to my point about the hypocrisy, let's see if I can uh, mm, 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 find the clip that I'm thinking of, of Donald Trump Jr. bragging, strangely, that you're not going to find my father on a list. We're never going to surrender. It's not our style, man. We don't. 
At this point, we got to fight, because congratulations, if you're in this room right now, you're probably on the FBI list. You're in with me, my father, my family, so you're in with good company. I am on every list except the Epstein list. We haven't heard anything about that one in a while. I'm fine with all the other lists. As long as I'm not on the Epstein list, we're good, right? Speaking of which, how is it that my father can be convicted of 34 crimes, but no one on Epstein's list has even been brought to light? How is, I'm trying to figure out how that's possible, right? But, So again, there's a consistent point that I think we would all make, which is Republican, Democratic, independent of any political persuasion, anyone non-political, etc., who engaged in any criminal acts with Jeffrey Epstein should be held legally accountable to the full extent of law. But then the the point, what what is being alluded to there is Oh, the people we don't like, they're all pedos. That, that's what's so often alluded to, right? From people like Don Jr. And, oh, there's this evil on the other side as proved by Epstein, which the connections there is it's very strange how uh, <laughs> they exist in that, that world where that argument makes sense. But all those powerful people we don't like on the other side they're probably on Epstein's list, but I'm on the FBI list because the FBI is targeting me and I'm happy to be on that list. And there's just no understanding as many people responded <laughs> to Don Jr.'s point there when he made it of the fact that actually, I don't know what your list you're talking about, but at least the flight logs Trump was on numerous times and at least, at least have some humility do a little introspection before flinging these allegations every which way and yes yes this is newsworthy we continue organized at, at mar-a-lago remember trump is in the pageant business and trump organized it and put it together it was miss i, I don't know miss something or other and you know girls were brought in and they were told it was a big deal a major event and flown into mar-a-lago and when they arrived on the mar-a-lago stage these girls for the beauty pageant the only people there to see them were epstein and trump i mean was, was there any awareness on epstein's part that there was something gross going on here? Or was he an equal participant? I mean, I certainly never got an indication that Epstein was questioning himself. Yeah. Um, but in fact, he seemed to regard Trump's behavior as somehow proving that his own was far more reasonable. Ah, interesting. Um, you know, I remember he said about Trump, now, of course, this is Jeffrey Epstein saying this, which actually kind of magnifies the description, but he said that Trump has no scruples. Good Lord. Wow. A great insight with an abs- Wolf alleging that Epstein alleged that about Donald Trump. But again, you, you zoom out. Okay, so you have this discussion. You have these anecdotes being shared. For the party of family values, which is the other part of this, of course they'll say, oh, this is all just fake news. All right. And what did we hear for so long? We heard prove this in a court of law. Prove any of the things you say about him, about his terrible character. Prove it criminal, then prove it in a, in a court of law. And while the... Sexual assault allegations brought by E. Jean Carroll were being brought past the statute of limitations. She brought the civil case, and in front of a jury, it was found that Trump was liable for sexually assaulting a woman. And they say, we don't care. And so on this 
story, whatever this relationship was, even if we just judge Trump for his, his willingness to associate for so many years with Donald Trump, Wolf says it was for 15 years they were buddies, besties, I think was the term. BFFs was the term used in this podcast. We have to be honest with ourselves, and I wish MAGA would be honest with themselves, about the person that we're talking about. Someone who lived his entire life, again, even if you don't think any specific criminal act related to this has been laid out or proven, totally, in terms of the proven, um, or is even being alleged here, even though there have been ones alleged, but you have to understand that this guy that the Republican Party and the MAGA movement has coalesced around has lived a life around people and treating people and abusing people in the case of E.G. Carroll and likely others, given the dozens of allegations, in a way that is so far from what you'd want in a friend, in a partner, not to mention in a president. A little bit more from this podcast. The trail's all over. And with plenty of passenger and cargo space, plus available tech like wireless charging, and your entire crew can stay connected, or check out a stylish and comfortable high. No matter your style. You with Cybersecurity Awareness Month coming to a... And there's some ads that I accidentally skipped into. Just one more identity theft dedicated you a day free trial. And update, there's a lot of ads in this podcast. Trial at Lipstein. Yeah. Com slash iHeart. That's lifelock.com slash iHeart. Terms apply. Epstein, he said that Trump had a fetish. Again, this is according to Epstein. Yeah. About trying to sleep with his friends' wives. That this was high sport for Donald Trump. And yeah. And Epstein seemed to draw the line here. And Epstein had a story that he said that Trump used to invite the prospective wife to his office and then get the husband on the phone, but not tell the husband that the wife was sitting there listening and then engage the husband in sex talk about who he was fucking. Oh, come on. Do you believe I, that I, happened? I, I'm, you know, um, I, I, <laughs> Vogel's the mind. Yeah. I'm, I'm, I'm just reporting. Um, I, I actually included that story in Fire and Fury. I mean, it's so medieval. Yeah. So again, I say that uh, even the Daily Beast repeatedly, you can show this, Jaden, referred to Michael Wolff as a controversial author for whatever that stands for. And, uh, and these are some very salacious allegations and stories. But that one, it's not really an outlier. You then have separately a former, uh, now I'm blanking on the exact specifics, but a former model just recently coming out and accusing Trump of groping her when she was dating Epstein. And Epstein was standing there watching it happen. And she believed there was some sort of game. Then completely separately, Michael Wolff is saying, as a fly is flying around the studio, is saying there, there were these sorts of games being played. Trump having some sort of bizarre interest. Um, and then all of these anecdotes spanning a bunch of different people documenting it talking about this relationship. And then if you even were to set all of this aside, it's crazy that people choose to side with Trump on election denialism, on the civil trial sexual abuse case, on the dozens of other sexual allegation allegations that have been brought out, on the numerous criminal cases, on Trump cheating on his wives on him lying tens of thousands of times 
and saying, ah, this is the person we want to, to lead the family values movement, family values party. It's laughable. It's, it's truly, truly laughable. And this podcast and the reporting about it is just further emphasis of that. This is the guy. And it's so interesting. I'm sorry. Hopefully y'all are seeing the fly because if it just looks like I'm waving at the air, that'll be strange. Um, it's really coming after me. It doesn't want me to tell you this story. It's trying to censor me. Uh, I go back to often just because I like checking people's principles. You've seen here, I, I like being very mindful about what we say we know and what we say we don't know. We don't know at all. And then what we're just discussing in terms of stories coming out that are newsworthy. But you know, you know this for certain. If Biden or Harris had these stories, audio of Epstein talking about Trump in these ways, talking about their long friendship, an author documenting their long friendship outside of Michael Wolf, just years of videos and testimony about how close they were. MAGA would never let it go. And it's another sign of how much more the, dem I don't know, it's not even just the democratic movement, but the, the pro-democracy movement, aside from the parties, how much more we care about being purely fact-based that we're not talking about this constantly. Because we're thinking, well, we don't have any smoking gun that would relate to criminality, so let's not even talk about it at all. But MAGA looks at Epstein and goes, we're just going to pretend like all Democrats were connected to him. Sure, why not? It's crazy. The crazy double standard. But here's the information uh, that have been breaking tonight. Again, I don't have a bunch of big takeaways, but make of it what you will. And let me know what you thought of all that in the comments.